Instead of spending a couple of hours taking you through dozens of studies, here's the checklist I've arrived at for determining whether an exercise is good for building muscle. Using this checklist, I've identified the two most overrated exercises you should avoid and the two most underrated exercises you should be doing for tricep maps. I'll give you those at the end of the video. Without further ado, let's start with the single most popular tricep exercise, the cable pushdown. If someone tells you they're about to do a tricep movement, this is probably the one. It isolates the triceps through their primary function, elbow extension. There are no other major muscle groups that could give out first, which ensures the triceps are trained close to failure. We also happen to have two studies on the cable pushdown, comparing it to the cable overhead extension. The first, by Stasinaki and colleagues, found similar muscle growth between the two exercises. Unfortunately, the study had a sample size of only nine untrained women. The second, by Maui and colleagues, had a substantially larger sample size and found 30 to 50% more tricep growth from the overhead extension. Why doesn't the pushdown stimulate as much growth as the overhead extension? It probably has to do with the triceps long head function. Since the long head functions as a shoulder extensor, elevating your arm stretches it more, which likely produces more muscle growth. As a result, the cable pushdown goes into high C tier. It's not a bad exercise at all, but it probably won't maximize tricep growth. In the same vein, in terms of shortening the long head, we have the dumbbell kickback. Not only are you forced to train one arm at a time, you're also involving your shoulder extensors, rear delts, lats, etc. isometrically just to keep your arm in place. Its only saving grace is that it somewhat isolates the triceps. Again, the shoulder extensors are involved somewhat, so not entirely. Detail. What about the variation of the cable pushdown, the cross-body cable extension? Well, it has effectively the same limitations and benefits of the cable pushdown. The only differences are that it looks cooler, but requires double the number of cables and feels a bit awkward, low C tier. The banded pushdown is similar, but even worse. For best muscle growth, we want more resistance in the stretch and less in the contracted position. The banded pushdown accomplishes the opposite, low detail. With that, we've covered all tricep isolation lifts that have your arm in neutral position. Next, skull crusher variations. If you'd like to take the guesswork out of which exercises to pick, check out Myodapt. Myodapt is a coach in your pocket designed by exercise scientists and being updated with new research continuously. Myodapt ranks exercises based on the scientific evidence in terms of effectiveness for you based on your goals and time availability. It gives you S tier exercises so you can gain as much muscle as possible. It creates a program individualized to you. Go to myodapt.com and sign up to be notified when it launches. You'll be able to lock in an exclusive lifetime discount. Let's start with a barbell skull crusher. It's easily loadable and isolates the triceps. It also provides a better stretch than the pushdown on the long head of the triceps since your shoulder is flexed or elevated by 90 degrees. However, loading up a barbell can take some time and finding a free bench isn't always the easiest. You're also not getting the best stretch on the long head into mid B tier. If you use dumbbells instead, you get the same benefits, but save time on loading a barbell and can potentially get a bit deeper without crushing your skull. These are usually also more comfortable on people's wrists. High B tier. There are four different variations of the basic free weight skull crusher. First, we have the cross body skull crusher. Coming across the body does nothing to enhance tricep growth, but it does make the lift more awkward and heavily reduces the stretch into low C tier. The JM Press, named after JM Blakely, famous powerlifter, is a double-edged sword for hypertrophy. In the JM Press, you perform a skull crusher, allowing your arms to come down, which is shoulder extension. On the one hand, this variation increases the resistance on the triceps at the bottom in the stretch by increasing the moment arm the triceps are working against. On the other hand, it may prevent the long head from being stimulated effectively. Just like the hamstrings during the squat, during the JM press, the long head is being shortened at one joint and stretched at another. Studies have shown that this dynamic usually reduces growth substantially. So the JM press probably isn't great for the long head. Into mid B tier it goes. Solid for the lateral medial head of the triceps, but probably bad for the long head. What about the nemesis of the JM press, the school over? Instead of letting your arms come down, you're letting them come up, shoulder flexion. 
This solves the issue of the long head being de-emphasized. In fact, if anything, the stretch on the long head increases since you're getting your arm overhead more. However, it does tend to reduce resistance in the stretch, turn the exercise into more of a compound lift, and involve your lats a bit more since you're performing a hybrid of the skull crusher and pullover. Mid beta. The final skull crusher variation that bears mentioning is the incline skull crusher. It places the long head in a slightly more stretched position since you've increased shoulder flexion. It also tends to be easier on some people's elbows anecdotally. However, it does make it harder to get a full stretch. Low beta. Free weights aren't the only way to perform skull crusher-like exercises, with your arms at around 90 degrees of shoulder flexion. If you're short on equipment, try the bodyweight skull crusher. Performed either on the ground or with a barbell, this is the bodyweight equivalent of a JM press. Similar downsides and benefits with some additional stabilization required. Low beta. If the benches are taken up, a decent alternative is the rope skull crusher, or the butchered cable overhead extension as I like to think of it as. Your shoulder angle will be about 90 degrees, but it will involve drastically more stabilization than a regular skull crusher, since the cable is pulling your whole body back. Low beta. I would avoid the preacher tricep machine if you can. It also tends to push your body back, making it difficult to lift appreciable loads. It's also very tricky to get a full stretch, since the machine will always try to push your elbows back, reducing tricep stretch. mid seated. Now, for the last category of tricep isolation exercises, overhead extensions. Let's start with a dumbbell overhead extension. I think it's underrated. For one, by having your arm overhead and the shoulder fully flexed, we're providing the best possible stretch to the long head. Additionally, the resistance in the dumbbell overhead extension is biased towards the stretched portion of the movement. It's highly time efficient since you just grab dumbbells and get going. And if the equipment is free, you can even sit down to reduce any stabilization requirements. Its only real downside is that big and unwieldy dumbbells can make it tricky to get a full stretch. Though, you can always do these single arm if that's an issue. I like using a double progression on these since jumping in weight from one dumbbell to the next week to week can be daunting. My favorite cue for overhead extensions is elbows at the ceiling. When you push these very hard, it can become tempting to turn it into a behind the neck press, which reduces long head stimulus. S tier. The barbell version of the overhead extension shares many of the same benefits, but has the downsides of requiring you to load a barbell, which takes time, and is usually a bit less comfortable from coaching experience on people's wrists and their shoulders. So, A tip. The cable overhead extension, on the other hand, has all the benefits of the dumbbell overhead extension, but can be a bit awkward to get into position for. Low S tip. A spin on the traditional cable overhead extension, the katana extension, has been gaining popularity. It requires two cables to perform, which makes it a bit trickier to find the equipment for. It makes it even more awkward to get into position compared to the regular overhead extension. It doesn't really offer any clear benefit over the regular cable overhead extension either. So into mid A tier it goes. Throughout this tier list, you may have noticed that I've only really touched on isolation movements. There is a reason for that. The long head doesn't get trained super well during multi-joint pushing movements, since it's being shortened at one joint while being lengthened at another. Elbow extension and shoulder flexion are being performed simultaneously. As a result, when it comes to overall tricep growth, compound movements are worse than isolation movements. However, as a foundation for a program and for growing the medial and lateral head of the triceps, compound movements are still great options. First, we have the close grip bench press. The bench press is hardest in the mid-range of the movement for most people. Adopting a close grip increases the stretch you're able to get in your triceps. I wouldn't go closer than shoulder width. As with any compound movement, the front delt and pecs can give out first. Loading up a barbell lowers the time efficiency of the movement as well. The long head isn't being trained super well. Finally, most people aren't getting maximal elbow flexion or stretch on the triceps in the close grip bench press. The bar touches your chest before you get there. So, into mid beater it goes. What about push-ups? There are three variations of push-ups to know about. First, the regular push-up. Compared to the close grip bench press, you're trading off time taken to load a barbell for stabilization required. Unfortunately, the push-up can also be annoying to load. While most people can get close to failure with a set of five to 50 push-ups, the subpar loadability can become an issue for some. 
low beta. You might try to load the push-up by using a band. And while this does somewhat remedy the issue of loadability that exists for certain people, you also introduce another issue, a poor resistance curve. By banding the push-up, resistance increases in the shortened position, but not in the stretched position. For muscle growth, that's no good. Plus, since most people can get to failure with a reasonable number of reps on push-ups, the trade-off in loadability versus resistance profile probably isn't worth it. mid -cite. Finally, the deficit push-up. In a regular push-up, you probably won't be able to get a full stretch on your triceps before reaching the floor. Use a deficit and you're getting a much better stretch on the triceps. Into ATA. To round out this tier list, we have dips. If you have the mobility for it and your joints feel good doing it, the dip accomplishes everything a deficit push-up does for the triceps. I can personally get into full elbow flexion, getting a very good stretch on the medial and lateral head of the triceps. For most people, doing dips for moderate reps also doesn't require much additional weight, making it a quick setup process for the exercise. The only downsides are that it still doesn't train the long head particularly well, it does involve some stabilization, and some people will struggle to do it, whether due to joint constraints or insufficient strength. Into A2. If you're currently struggling to do dips, the machine-assisted dip, or a well-constructed dip machine, which is bare, are your best option. The machine-assisted dip allows nearly anyone to do dips in an effective rep range, through an effective range of motion, without modifying the resistance profile in a counterproductive fashion like the band-assisted dip would. Obviously, if you're able to do 20 to 30 or more full range dips, you may not need the machine, but that's going to be a minority of lifters. Into A2. Finally, the bench dip. If you have access to the machine assisted dip, I see nearly no reason to use this. That said, it can be a decent progression exercise towards the actual dip, and can be done nearly anywhere. Unfortunately, it is very difficult to load, so you shouldn't be using this exercise for very long, before you graduate to real dips. C tier. Here's the final tier list. In my opinion, the two most overrated tricep movements for tricep growth are the cable pushdown and the banded pushdown. The two most underrated movements for tricep growth are the dumbbell overhead extension, which is time efficient and highly effective, and the dip. I don't see you doing these nearly enough. The most underrated clothing brand? Rascal Apparel. They're constantly bringing out new designs, and they'll almost certainly have something to your liking. Rascalapparel.com, code WOLF at checkout for 10% off, and to support me in the process. Dr. Mile Wolf, triceps or shoe horse cocking, we out. <laughs>